Welcome back to more ReZero. We are starting the third arc. And if you miss any of the previous arcs, then check the description for links. Um, this is going to be covering the anime and the light novel. I didn't find any web novel translations, but I probably could have if I looked a little harder, but I didn't. So here we are. <laughs> here are the arcs in case you forgot. Arc 3 covers most of the first season of the anime. I'm just going to copy and paste my quick recap from the end of the last arc here. Subaru goes to the store, ends up in another world, talks to a merchant, runs off down an alley, gets cornered by thieves, yells for help, gets help, runs to Felt's house, goes to the loot house with Felt. Amelia shows up. Elsa shows up. Fit happens. Reinhardt shows up. Fit ends. Subaru gets cut. Faints. Wakes up in a mansion. Gets a job. Works himself sick. Takes a nap. Goes shopping. Sucks at dog training. Sucks out the venom, takes a hike to save some kids, becomes a chew toy, wakes up, takes a hike to save a demon, rediscovers the power of telling the truth, fights a demon using a demon, thinks about his life choices far too late, and is saved by a flying clown. So in the last episode of Death and Suffering, Subaru managed to bullshit his way into saving everyone. The mob beast attack was stopped, and everyone's on his side now. Hooray. <laughs> this arc starts... Uh, sometime after the last arc. <laughs> the wiki says it's roughly two months after Subaru's arrival to this world. And I have no idea where they're getting that from. <laughs> Maybe I'm just misreading it. I don't know. In the anime, Reinhardt says it's been about a month since the first day. The light novel actually says the same. But that event happens a couple of days after the first day of this arc. I think the web novel says 13 days or something close to that. I'm not sure. That's just what I've read. Um, look, at this point, it's not clear and could be a little different depending on which version you're following. The first two arcs took about six days, and it's a few days from the start of this arc before Reinhardt says it's been a month since the first day. Uh, you know, I'm just going to say it's been three weeks since the second arc. Reinhardt says about, so it doesn't have to be exact and this is just kind of a best guess time is hard okay <laughs> considering the amount of times that subaru died in the first week going three weeks without an incident is uh some good fucking progress <laughs> but anyway let's get into the story we'll begin this arc with subaru and amelia going on a date to the village subaru leads the town in his normal radio calisthenics routine and amelia watches from a distance I said this is a date, but it, it's not. <laughs> the, the light novel makes it more clear that they've been coming to the village every morning to do this workout and to basically build a relationship with the people. Uh, we also get a little more information, like the location information. The village is about a 15 minute walk to the mansion. One thing I do want to discuss is Subaru's flirting or how Amelia takes his flirting, I guess. Uh, this is kind of important for later on. Subaru throws out compliments and says how much he likes Amelia, and most of the time she just dismisses it. Uh, there is a big reason for this that will be discussed later, but another reason is that she just doesn't see it as genuine. Because of Subaru's timing on a lot of it, he kind of comes off like he's trying to change the subject. So Amelia will bring up something and then he will throw out something flirty and she will take it as him not wanting to talk about the subject. And she doesn't get mad about it or anything. She just thinks it's his personality. But at the same time, she doesn't take it as him showing genuine interest. So there's a, a bigger reason for her thinking that's discussed later on. And this is just my interpretation of it, so I could be wrong. After hanging out for a while, they head back to the mansion. A dragon carriage is parked in front, an emissary from the capital. Amelia goes inside to talk with them while Subaru brings out expensive tea to try to get information from the servant by the carriage. The servant doesn't give any information, but they chat for a bit before being interrupted. Three very important new characters are shown here. Wilhelm, Felix, and the Earth Dragon. Yes, the dragon is very important, and I'm actually not joking. <laughs> he doesn't get named just yet though, so I'll wait on that part. Subaru and Wilhelm talk for a bit, and they bond over girls, actually. <laughs> he sees that Subaru and Amelia are close, even though she's a candidate. 
And Subaru says that he doesn't really think about all that. He's just interested in Amelia, so he's trying to see where the relationship goes. And he says that Wilhelm probably had a lot of the same thoughts about his wife. Now, Wilhelm and his wife will be important topics to talk about later on in this arc, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> For now, him Subaru bringing that up kind of lets him bond with Wilhelm pretty quick. And I... <laughs> I gotta say, sometimes Subaru manages to stumble on ways to bond with people, and it's like a superpower or something. <laughs> the light novel adds in an important detail here. The cloak that Amelia is always wearing, the white one with the ears, uh, is enchanted with magic. It's supposed to stop people from noticing who she is, unless she wants them to know. Wilhelm could tell it was her immediately. So Subaru makes a surprising connection that he's not a normal guy if he's able to just see through that magic. And he discovers it through pure luck, basically. But that's still more than I expected from Subaru, so... <laughs> After the guests leave, Amelia explains that she has been summoned to the capital, probably related to the royal selection. Subaru tries to talk Amelia into letting him go, but that was pretty much already decided. Felix is the greatest user of water and healing magic in the capital, and Subaru's gate needs to be healed, so Amelia talked Felix into helping. Amelia feels she is somewhat responsible for the condition of Subaru's gate, so she is just returning the favor for everything he's done for her. I kind of go back and forth on this. On one hand, it's his fault for overusing magic and fucking up his gate. But on the other hand, they know that he's ignorant of magic, and no one really explains how serious it is to have a broken gate. So I'll let Amelia take some of the blame here. <laughs> On the way back to the capital, Felix is surprised that Wilhelm is so friendly with Subaru. Wilhelm says, I merely took a bit of a liking to that young man's eyes. Those are the eyes of one who has seen death several times. I mean, he's 100% right. <laughs> This is Wilhelm von Astrea, the sword demon. And in case you don't remember, Astrea is also Reinhardt's family name. So they are related, but I'll wait until it's brought up in the story to talk about that more. There is going to be a fuck ton of new people that are introduced in this arc. And they're all going to be important, so I can't skip over them. I'll do my best to try to explain how they fit into the story to make it a little easier. In fact, I'll probably end up just making a completely separate video so I can introduce everybody all at once. Subaru and the gang get ready to leave. Normally, Ram would be the one to go to the capital, but this time Ren has asked to go to keep an eye on Subaru. Roswell, Amelia, Subaru, and Rem will go to the capital, while Ram stays behind to take care of the mansion and Beatrice. We learn a little bit about ground dragons, or earth dragons, whichever one you want to call them. Uh, they're basically just giant reptiles that are used in the same way that we use horses. They can be extremely intelligent, and they all possess the divine protection of wind evasion. This makes it so that wind doesn't affect them, and is extended to things that are on them and things that they are pulling. And which is a good thing because Subaru kind of estimates that the one that they have is able to run at like 60 miles per hour while pulling the carriage. This is mostly skipped over in the anime, but the light novel kind of goes into more detail on how this blessing works. So the blessing gets applied to anything that the dragon is pulling, but once it gets too far away from the dragon, then it loses the blessing. Subaru sticks his hand out well, he sticks his whole body out, but he ends up sticking his hand out a little too far, and the blessing gets removed. So he wasn't feeling the wind while he had the blessing. He was still getting hit by the wind, but he wasn't feeling it. And then when he lost the blessing, all of a sudden he just started getting hit with 60 mile per hour winds <laughs> and gets blown away. There's... Also, a cooldown, so once you lose the blessing, you can't just immediately reapply it. I think it's like a 30-minute cooldown that you have to wait. And this isn't important at all, but I found it all interesting, so I had to share it. <laughs> yeah. 
Once in the capital, Subaru and Amelia stop at the Apple store so Subaru can make good on his promise and thank the merchant for his help. His name is given in the light novel. This is Karoman Rishu. From what I remember, he's not super important, but he does come up a few more times. And I'll probably end up just calling him the Apple guy most of the time. <laughs> There's a little bit of an economy lesson here in the light novel. Uh, Karoman charges two copper per apple, and Subaru orders ten. And while he's trying to remember the exchange rate, Karoman cuts him off and says that it's nine copper for one silver. Subaru just accepts that and goes to pay him, and then the merchant gets kind of pissed. <laughs> the exchange rate changes every day, and it's posted every day so that everyone knows what it is. If you don't know what the exchange rate is, you could very easily get fucked over by a merchant. So, Karoman is a good guy, and seeing Subaru so nonchalant about it means that he's probably going to end up getting tricked and practically legally robbed at some point. Ignorance is bliss, but it is torture on your wallet. <laughs> Reinhardt is the next person on the list. They head to the guard tower. If he's not there, they should know how to find him. The anime skips over a few good scenes here. Subaru and Amelia have a... Argument's probably not a good word. A, a quick confrontation, maybe? Subaru brings up the selection ceremony event thing that is happening tomorrow. And Amelia, being very tired of having this same discussion, says that he is not going. He needs to worry about himself instead of worrying about her. He is going to give everything for her, no matter what. Which prompts Amelia to ask, why? Why go so far for her? And Subaru can't answer. He literally stands there in silence until Amelia gives up and moves on. And he feels like shit that didn't have the guts to say anything. Given how much he flirts with her, you would think this would have been a layup but he can't express his feelings directly. So this discussion isn't really that important to the story, but it does kind of introduce issues that are going to come up later on in this arc. While they're walking, Puck talks to Subaru telepathically. And this is an interesting conversation. Uh, he tells Subaru that he has a high affinity to spirits, which is probably why uh, Beatrice likes him, which is, News to Subaru, and probably the rest of us. <laughs> Puck tries to cheer him up about the conversation that he just had with Amelia. He knows Amelia well enough that he doesn't want Subaru to think too negative about the conversation. But he also adds, don't get my hopes up too much, or Leah's. In fact, I'm just going to quote this whole thing. Hope is a gentle poison. Even if you know it will ruin you. You can't help but reach for that illusion that seems close enough to grasp. You are truly a poison. God damn, that is such a backhanded compliment. <laughs> Puck is trying to find a middle ground here. He wants Amelia to have hope, but he doesn't want her to be disappointed. So he doesn't want her to have too much hope. <laughs> or maybe I'm just reading into it too much, I don't know. They reach the guard tower, but before they make it inside, they meet a knight named Julius. Subaru and Julius don't get off on the best start here, mainly because of shit like this. <laughs> Julius is a proper knight, and he acts the part, but that personality doesn't mesh well with Subaru. He is far too quick to get jealous, <laughs> and thus begins the most annoying phase that Subaru goes through. And this isn't a hot take or anything. Everyone watching or reading seems to hate Subaru during this time. Amelia has Subaru wait outside while she goes in with Julius as her guide. It's not clear in the anime, but she's going inside to use magic and mirrors. And they're a metia that is functionally used the same as like a video call. It's, it's pretty much what you would expect from magic mirrors. While he waits outside, he sees a girl being taken to an alleyway. Subaru has a bad feeling, so he runs over and pretends to know her to give them a chance to run off, but she declines. She doesn't think she's in any danger, so there's no reason to run. 
Subaru then notices the same three delinquents from the last time he was in the capital. He pretends that he can call on Reinhardt again if they don't back down, as Rom shows up behind him. With the threat of Reinhardt and now a giant, the thieves run off. The woman isn't given a name just yet, but there's a line that I want to quote. This world is designed to operate in a way that works best for me, so I am never at a disadvantage. And this will explain her attitude towards everyone going forward. This is the events of the anime, but the light novel is actually completely different. Uh, Subaru does come in and try to save the girl, and she does reject him, but the three stooges run off as soon as Subaru brings up Reinhardt. Rom doesn't show up right now at all. Instead, the girl notices that he has apples, and claims that those are her apples now. <laughs> but she does say that she will play games in order to win them. They'll flip coins and guess heads or tails. And if she is right, she will get one apple for each flip. But if Subaru is right at all, then he gets to touch her boobs. So naturally, Subaru takes up that bet. <laughs> After eight flips, she is eight and oh. <laughs> Subaru decides to change games to rock, paper, scissors, and he immediately loses the first game after explaining the rules. So for the last one, he cheats. He uses all three in one. I don't even know how you would do that, but he explains that it insta wins and it's her fault for not knowing about it. It's stupid, it's childish, and it somehow works, and she accepts the loss. She's full on ready to pay up her side of the deal, but Subaru being Subaru is hesitant to claim his reward. <laughs> and they end up getting interrupted by the three thieves from before. Well, there's a lot more of them, more than three now, but they get interrupted and they have to run off. They run down a bunch of alleys and eventually they meet Rom and he hides them as the group of thieves pass by. In both versions, Subaru tells Rom that Belt was kidnapped by Reinhardt. Now, apparently Rom has gone this entire month without knowing what happened. <laughs> I, which I guess makes sense. He was knocked out before Reinhardt ever got there. So him hearing that Reinhardt kidnapped Felt is probably super confusing. <laughs> In the light novel, Subaru goes through the entire story, including the part where he asks for Amelia's name and then mentions that he actually doesn't know this girl's name either. And then Rom says, just how many scrapes do you get into for girls whose names you don't know? I feel like this is just a character trait of Subaru's at this point. <laughs> Some quick info about Rom that's mentioned in the light novel. His actual name is Volga Cromwell. Well, his last name is given in the light novel. I'm not sure if it'll be important or not, so I'm just gonna go ahead and throw in the full name. Um, it's also mentioned that, well, he tells Subaru that if he wants to get a hold of him in the future, he needs to talk to Karoman. Small world. <laughs> One thing that I probably should have mentioned earlier, the light novel brings up Subaru's scars a lot more often. The anime brings it up, but it's right after the Mobby's attack, and that's pretty much it. The light novel, uh, Emilia notices, Wilhelm notices, and here Rom notices. It's never a big discussion or anything. People will point it out, and Subaru kind of brushes past it and tries to move on real quick. So it doesn't really change a whole lot about like the story, but it is interesting to see that other people do notice them. Last thing, the anime doesn't show how condescending and conceited the girl is. I mean, they do later on, but for this part, it she's pretty toned down for the anime compared to the light novel. But she does have one good line for Subaru. Whether you are aware of it or not, you so thoroughly play the fool. It is no virtue. It is merely a thin shell within which you conceal your weakness. It is as repellent to the eye as your face. I, I've got nothing to add to that. <laughs> Amelia finds them, but she's accompanied by a strange man. 
His outfit seems mismatched and he's wearing a helmet that completely covers his face. Once again, Subaru's jealousy flares up and the man in the helmet calls him out on it. Seems your buddy's got a screw loose, little lady. More worried about losing you to another man than happy to see you. Amelia cuts in to say that he was also looking for someone, so they were looking together. The woman from before steps up and calls to the man in the helmet. He goes by the name Al, and she was the one that he was looking for. With everyone found, Subaru shares a couple apples with her, and they go their separate ways. In addition to Al's weird outfit, weird Al, <laughs> he's also missing his left arm. It's not stated in the anime, but if you look, he is 100% missing his left arm. The light novel just does a better job of pointing it out. Al and Subaru bond a little more in the light novel than they do in the anime. The conversations are about the same, but I think uh, Subaru spending more time with the girl in the light novel actually makes him more sympathetic to Al. <laughs> The light novel also makes it clear that she started the fight with Tan Chin Khan. She just started insulting them, and that's what caused them to target her. Once they have gone down the road a little way, Amelia questions how Subaru met the girl and how he knows her, but quickly moves on when Subaru is too confused to answer. Her concern is going to be explained pretty soon, so I'll wait before going into that. The anime moves on, but the light novel decides to bring back the group of thugs from before. There's about 15 randos led by... The light novel says dumb from dumb, dumber, dumbest. So I'm not really sure which one they're talking about. If we translate over the dumb, dumber, dumbest to Tan Chin Khan, that would mean dumb is Tan, which is the big guy. But it could have also just be the first guy. If they if Subaru just put them in order, then the dumb is the first guy, which is the smallest guy. So, I, I don't know. It, it doesn't matter. One of them is leading the group. They start making threats before their leader, whichever one it is, gets his face smashed into the ground by Rem, who makes her grand entrance from the sky. And then she proceeds to clean house. There is... No way any of them stood a chance against Rem. <laughs> the rest of the thugs go after Al and the girl, and they give zero shits. <laughs> the girl just stands there and pulls out an apple and starts eating it. And then she says she's in a good mood, so she'll let them live. And then Al pulls out uh, his sword, and you can pretty much guess how the rest of that ends. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and end things here for now. The ceremony's coming up and there's going to be a lot happening and I don't want to cut the story off in the middle of it. So we'll end the video here and I'll see you in the next one.